All right, this is the week six press conference with offensive coordinator quarterbacks coach Jake Favitol prior to facing Oregon State for homecoming on Saturday. We'll go ahead and get questions started with Jeff Ferrado from Cal Sports Report. Go ahead, Jeff. Jake, how you doing? What's going on, Jeff? Doing all right? I'm all right. So yeah. um, can you uh, take us through when you watch tape of Sam on Saturday, what you liked, where he still needs to work? Uh, he had been talking, you've been talking a lot about his decision making. Has that improved? Or was the biggest issue simply he wasn't accurate enough or was it a lot more complicated than that? Uh, a little mixture of everything. Um, you know, you look at Sam's play and like, you know, I, I think all the quarterbacks right now are really in uh, kind of that development developmental stage and and still working through uh, just kind of building consistency. But you look at Sam, uh, I thought Sam did some great things with his feet. Unfortunately, that they were negated by penalties. He had two very explosive runs. Uh, there were like when we're talking about the QB run game, there was some indecision on some things, but he did hit the right plays in certain moments and uh, and those got called back. But there's also some that he missed out there on on, on certain downs. But when he got to the passing game, uh, I think we all know that the passing game is the most inconsistent thing that we have right now. And uh, a lot has to do with uh, getting to that second read. Uh, sometimes with Sam, he's such a natural like athlete that uh, he wants to always utilize his running ability. And sometimes we just need to keep working on being in the pocket uh, and getting through that progression. You know, uh, he was a little off on a couple throws, but he made some great throws to Jeremiah Hunter. Uh, he had two kind of uh, fade balls that were uh, big explosive plays, one in the first quarter and one in the second quarter for a touchdown. Uh, uh, but like, you know, he's doing some he's 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 just inconsistent right now with uh, with the. Uh, uh, his kind of his footwork and getting through the progressions. But uh, he did have some missed throws, as you guys saw, uh, which happens with QBs at times. Uh, but, you know, like I've seen him where he's been very accurate at times. But with us and what we're working on is working to get to that second, third read and trusting the pocket and just and stepping up in the pocket and not always trying to revert to a scramble or try to make a play with his feet. So that's that's kind of what we've been working with. And we've kind of known about that with, for a while with Sam and he shows great signs at it. It's just we just got to keep working on the consistency of just making sure you're staying in the pocket and getting through your progression. Yeah, is it fair to say that quarterback position for Saturday is still un unresolved? Yeah, I would say so. Um, you know, Coach and I have had a lot of discussions about it. And, and uh, you know, we had discussions last week about playing Fernando. I think, you know, there's a lot of guys that are uh, still in the mix for this, uh, This, uh, you know, for, for being able to play on Saturday. But, like, we have a plan moving forward, and we need to uh, – they, they all had a great practice today. We need to get another evaluation these next two days on these guys. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. The next question will come from Emmanuel from the Daily Cal. Good morning, Coach. Uh, Good morning. You touched on the quarterbacks. Kind of a more general question. What does the offense need to do to get past Oregon State's defense? Yeah, you know, you look at Oregon State's defense, very talented and, uh, you know, one of the top defenses in the country. You know, very good at stopping the run. They hold teams to minimal points. Uh, very aggressive, very sound in what they do. And we've got to be very efficient. Um, more importantly, you know, like we – we end up kind of being a one-dimensional team at times where we're just hammering the football. And I thought I was really proud of this last week of how those guys put together an 18 play drive, which we would have finished that drive, uh, but they put 18 plays together and like milked about seven minutes off the clock, which was good. But I, our pass game has to be more consistent. We got to be able to, to spread the ball, loosen up the defense, especially against a great run stopping defense like Oregon State. We're going to have to get them running sideline to sideline. We're going to have to spread it around a little bit more uh, so they don't have to. So we're not just a one dimensional team going up against a team that's very good at stopping the run. Thank you. Thanks. All right, we'll go to Michael Wagman from Bear Insider. Jake, when it comes to the quarterbacks and your play calling, is it a lot easier on you when it's one guy from start to finish like last week with Sam, or does it even matter to you? Are you guys going to do what you do regardless of who's back there or how many times guys have rotated in and out? Yeah, I think the the play calls change based off of which QB is in there. You know, we spent a lot of time through fall camp and a lot of time through the summer and, and spring. Uh, like with Sam and Fernando, I know what they're capable of doing. We try to keep developing on on other facets of their game, you know, just other things that they need to work on. Um, but, you know, uh, you try to call plays that are comfortable for those guys when they're in there. Try to call plays for Sam where he has better vision, better launch points in the pocket, uh, some move the pocket stuff, some QB run game as well that he's very good at. 
uh, when you get in with like Ben and Fernando, those guys are very similar. So you kind of spread it out a little bit more and uh, you have to use more RPO driven stuff based off of they're not the most mobile quarterbacks when they run. So you see two different styles. I think there was a different style of play when you uh, go into the Washington game uh, and the North Texas game. All right. The Washington game, we started with Ben. Uh, we were spreading it out a little bit. We were hitting some plays that we hadn't hit mo- much, like a lot of those deep crossers across the middle. Um, and then Sam came in and we changed up uh, how like the flow of the game was more run RPO driven at the end of that Washington game. At the North Texas game, we were more run RPO, like we were more quarterback run game driven, uh, quick game stuff uh, with Sam. And then when we uh, when Ben got in the game, we kind of opened it up a little bit more with uh, more deeper down the field throws. Uh, so we know what all these quarterbacks are capable of doing. Uh, we just uh, like, and it doesn't really matter who goes in the game. Like, it's more about who's going to play the most efficient and consistently when they're doing it. And then I, I know what they're comfortable with. Uh, with uh, so, like, our play calls are uh, are going to be uh, really benefited for them. If that makes Thank sense. You. Yeah. Our next question will come from Steve Croner from the SF Chronicle. Yeah, Jake. I'm um, just kind of following up what you said about all three QBs. Would it be out of the question? for Fernando to get his first start Saturday night? You know, like, we'll see where that goes. You know, I, I right now I think that all three of those guys are at the same level to me. You know, um, you know, it's it's been – I think there's a lot of frustration in the offensive room. Uh, I do think that we are playing hard and we're, we're finding ways to kind of be efficient and move the ball when we need it to and it shows up. But we all know that that quarterback position needs to have more consistency. Like, like we have, like – we've had two games with Idaho and – uh, this Arizona State where we've had just a little over 100 yards throwing, which I don't I don't think I've ever had that in my entire career. And that's something that we've got to fix. And we've kind of had the discussion that all three of you guys, it's open and, you know, made the best man win. And I think, you know, it, it, there's a lot saying that you could see all three of them play at times. Uh, you know, I've talked to coach about that, about whittling it down, you know, just so he can like at least like figure out who the guy is. But like, like I, I wouldn't be shocked if like Fernando played or Ben or Sam. So it's just kind of up in the air for all of them. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. All right, we'll go to Matt Moreno from Rivals. Uh, Jeremiah really seems to relish that role of being the go-to guy at receiver. Uh, you know, what stood out to you as you've gotten to know him over these last several months? And Jeremiah, he loves the game. I think he does a great job at, like, he's a great competitor. Um, and I, I think he's a very talented kid now. Like I'm saying, you see some of the catches that he makes. Like the the one catch uh, down our sideline that uh, was questionable, like when they reviewed it to see if he was in or not, that was a remarkable catch. And then his touchdown pass down on the uh, to the north end zone, um, that was pretty impressive too for a back shoulder. And then if you look like what he did in like the Washington game, like that that goal line uh, uh, catch was like arguably a top ten moment for uh, Sports Center. And I just think he. He's getting better every day. He wants to be great. He's taking a great leadership role in that room, uh, very consistent in what he's doing, and uh, he's turned into a great target. And I think he's uh, is very comforting for our quarterbacks because if you get in the vicinity of him, it seems like he comes down with it. You know, he also had that touchdown catch versus Idaho. That was pretty remarkable, too, on the post uh, going in the north end zone as well. So I, I just think his consistency and, and like, he practices the way he plays and it translates, and I think that kid's going to have a great career in the future as well. Here we'll go back to Jeff Barado from Cal Sports Report. Yeah, Jake, as much as uh, maybe Sam and other quarterbacks are getting comfortable with him, did you have any concerns on Saturday that I think he was the only wideout who caught a pass in the first three quarters? Yeah, that like that is a concern. You know, I know that uh, we, I don't, I can't remember what the final stats were, like twelve to twenty nine. Uh, you know, like we've got to be able to spread the ball out more. I think that's the one thing that is is truly missing of what we're doing is our pass game right now. You know, I think that uh, we kind of lose confidence in the pass game at times. You know, like we started, uh, we start off attacking and throwing down the field and and going, uh, uh, trying to spread it out as much as we can. But then as the game goes on and you see the consistency is not there and we have incompletions and it's hard to overcome a second and long. And then we were in a lot of third down and long and our third down and long, uh, you know, pass, you know, threats was kind of irrelevant in this game, you know, and uh, that's something that we got to fix, you know, and uh, we've got to spread it all around. We need to get more guys active. You know, when you look at the North Texas game, uh, even the Washington game, like we were spreading that ball out a little bit more evenly and a lot more touches. And that's what we got to get back to, you know, like it was good seeing at least the uh, Jack injuries getting a, a, a touch in there as well. I would love to get the tight ends more active. I want to uh, get a lot more guys uh, active and start spreading the ball a little bit more. 
Ashton Stredick, I didn't carry the ball in the game. I don't know if you played at all. It, was that just kind of what happened, or is he banged up? Or I think that's just what happened. You know, uh, you started off the we didn't have the ball very much in that first half. You know, uh, in, especially in that first quarter, and and then when you get uh, kind of into the game, you know, yeah, Jay Ott was running very well. You know, 165 yards was running extremely hard. I wanted to just kept feeding him the rock because I felt like he was one of the guys that was taking the game over, you know. And then when we would spill him, we would put in Isaiah Fonse, who was running extremely hard, too, and has done a really good job. So we had to lean on that run game, especially in the second half, and try to milk the clock and try to, you know, kind of gut one out and get a win. And, you know, those guys finally pulled one out to get a win, and especially when we're there's frustration uh, offensively because, you know, we're not playing to the level that we're capable of doing. But at the end of the day, they found a way to win the game, which is a very positive moving into this week for Jordan State. You know, I, I heard a stat today, and I, I haven't confirmed it yet, but that you guys have run the second most offensive plays of any team in the country behind <laughs> only Penn State. Uh, it, it, do you know that to be true? And if so, is it important and, and why is it important? Yeah, that – uh I don't know, like, if that's – I bet you we're high up there in the stats. I don't know what exactly where we stand. But, like, our kids are playing hard, and they're getting to the right guys at times, you know. And, and like, if you look at, like, that 18-play drive, like, we were just literally gutting that thing out the entire time and just, like, just hammering the ball and getting three, four yards and then maybe a 10-yard run. And we're just – you know, the kids are playing hard and with an edge. And, and uh, it's showing that, like, we're moving the ball – but we're not being explosive, and that's what we're missing. And that's where the pass game's got to come into play. You know, like I think when they know that, hey, we're not throwing the ball very well, then they load the box up and those yards get even tougher. But we do a good job at getting those yardages in uh, really loaded boxes. And uh, that's something where we've got to, like, you know, you are you can't be upset with it all the time, but it's like they're staying on the field. Our time of possession's good. We're trying to be efficient with it. They're fighting. They're playing hard. But we've got to be more explosive, and it all starts with getting that pass game going. So if you were more explosive, you might have fewer plays, and that might be a good thing? Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. All right, Thomas Dunn from Hyper, California. Uh, good morning, Jake. Uh, you talked about having to get Sam into trusting his progressions and what he sees. Uh, Justin was in here earlier talking about, you know, possibly having more deliberate use of his legs. How do you ride the fine line of trying to – develop Sam Jackson, the fifth, the pocket passer versus using his natural athleticism and things like the zone read game from game to game. Yeah, that they, there's a fine line that you go with uh, on that. Like, uh, you know, you have like I've had it with Johnny Manziel and Kyler Murray, uh, guys that are very active, like with their feet. And you tell them, like, you know, just utilize it when you need to. Like you want to look like when you're calling pass, you've got to get through progression. You can't just always be like a one progression guy and then go run the ball. All right? It's got to be going through your progression, then know when you got to use your feet. We do have the quarterback run game, which you guys see glimpses of that. Uh, he hit a, a couple explosives on that got called back. Those are design plays for him that I think he's very dynamic with. Uh, but when you get in the pass game, you know, we've got to be able to move through our progressions, you know, and get to that second and third progression more uh, without just saying like after not just scrambling after your first reads covered or maybe you see a protection breakdown. So there is a fine line with that because you don't want to handcuff him because he's a very talented kid. Uh, and you see like how dynamic he is with his feet, but we still have to have a threat of being able to go through progression and be that quarterback. And like what I do with Johnny, what I do with Kyler is, you know, hey, get to one, two, three, and then run. Instead of getting like down to your like fourth, like your fourth progression, which is tough to get down to, which is normally a back in the flats or a, a flat presence for a check down, just go use your feet and go get the first down, all right, because you're dynamic enough. Uh, but like I've had it with different guys, you know, with like Will Greer and Geno Smith and like Brandon Weed and those guys were are were active enough where they can run like they were more north and south, get north and south and slide after you get like five, six yards and call it, you know, call it a, a play, you know, and just chalk it up. But with Sam, he can actually hit that explosive play. So, you know, like trust your instincts. But more importantly, we got to we got to make sure that you have the threat of throwing the football first. Thank you. Okay. All right. We'll wrap this up with one more question from Jeff Parado. Go ahead, Jeff. Jake, this may be a stupid question, but I'm wondering when when you're a not real tall quarterback like Sam, is finding guys over the middle more difficult? And it, it seems like you guys run a lot of stuff to the outside, and I wonder if any of that is because of his stature. And, and you had one to injuries, like you said, over the middle, but not a lot of them. Uh, you don't see a lot of crossing stuff that you've done. Does that have anything to do with it or not? 
Yeah, like uh, this game, you know, uh, they're playing single high man free the entire game. You know, they're playing playing press, so the ball typically sprays on the outside, you know, uh, like to Jeremiah Hunter and, and things of that nature. But I, ha I have had, you know, with Kyler and Johnny over the years, like, you know, it was more about finding like launch points and like where they can sit in the pocket. Like the, the smaller quarterbacks, you know, it's more about – uh, arm angles and trying to get like find vision in between uh, in, in between offense line and find gaps and arm angles and and sometimes that gets difficult you know I think Sam's got a very unique uh, way to get the ball out uh, I do think when he when he looks back to that second read that's maybe crossing the middle and he may not have the vision needed that's when he starts to scramble a little bit more you know, and he's just got to trust it, trust the protection. I let it develop, and I think he'll hit those balls. Like I see him hit them like a lot in practice. Um, but I, it is, you know, like smaller quarterbacks have to find ways to find vision and then be able to throw across the middle of the field.